and living with complex information. We have a wonderful panel discussion with uh, 70 years of expertise on making maps um, about complexities and about wicked problems. Um, you've noticed that uh, Bob Horn is at the moment trying to get his presentation up. We have about an hour to go. I would like to have the uh, uh, discussants have, give a short presentation of maximum eight minutes. Then the other two participants can um, ask him questions just to make it intergenerational after all. Uh, and then we can open the floor to some questions and if we do everything well, then at the end of the hour, we've had enough questions and we've had the good presentations. I hope you can accept this, um, uh, this format, um, given the limit that we have, even though an hour is long. Once you get start talking, it suddenly seems very short. I'm going to ask the discussants to wave at the moment that I mentioned their names. And I think I'm going to start with Mary, Mary Suemo, who's working as an associate professor in service design at the Oslo School of Architecture, and her research concentrates on how to approach wicked problems in service design. Mary, would you like to wave at us just to show us uh, who you are? Thank you. <laughs> Berger. Berger Servilton is a professor in, um, <laughs> who is one of the founders of this Systemic Design Association. So some of you who have been here before might know him very well. Obviously, we've invited him because he was interested in the gigamaps that he was um, uh, developing lately. And uh, then we have Robert Horn, Bob Horn, um, who started working on uh, mess maps and all sorts of other uh, information murals uh, um, more than 20 years ago. And I would like to consider him one of you know, the founders of this with visualization on complexities. I'm going to ask Bob if he's already ready with his presentation or, or if we can start, otherwise we'll start with Berger, but it would be a shame to start with Berger if we have Bob with us. Bob, let us know how you're faring. It helps if you turn on your microphone. I'm sorry, um, Zoom has so improved the system that I cannot share a screen now uh, with you. Um, so I'm, I'm still, I'll still work on it uh, and maybe back with you later. All right. Um, all right, then we'll start with um, uh, Berger. Berger, if you have the opportunity, um, to start uh, your presentation. We saw that you managed to share it with us. So um, you have the floor. I think you're muted. Okay, um, thank you, Floor. Uh, I hope you find your, your way, <coughs> Bob, um, in one or the other way. I was very much looking forward to this. <coughs> My name is Peter Gusti Olson. I'm a professor at the Oslo School of Architecture and Design. And uh, since 2006, I have been uh, uh, working with systems oriented design and trying to develop systems oriented design as it's almost like a dialect or a variations of in the rich garden of systemic design, the pluralistic garden of systemic design. I'm going to talk about gigamaps. Um, what you see here is a kind of an extreme uh, uh, version of a gigamap. It's emotion or association based, um, and it's um, kind of individual and private. It's very hard to make sense of it without having talking to the, um, the person who has made it. By the way, is Palak Dodani, who's one of the members of the SDA board. Um, why does it not? There you go. Um, so what is a gigamap anyway? Um, gigamapping is super extensive mapping across multiple layers and scales with the goal of investigating relations 
<coughs> between seemingly separate categories, phenomena, etc., and hence pro providing boundary critiques on the conception and framing of systems. Gigamaps are most of all design artifacts. Designing is a way of investigating the world. Um, to the right, you have uh, this diagram, which indicates that gigamapping is not there to replace any other type of information visualization, mapping, or, or uh, any other visual activity. But it's a device where you can relate all those. You can drop everything, uh, all those variations, into the gigamap, and you can uh, draw uh, create relations between them. Um, here is another extreme gigamap, I would say. It's also not uh, possible to make sense of it without having the creators in at hand who can explain it to you. It's a process map. It makes a lot of sense to those this group that made it. Um, it's relation heavy, which is kind of, um, Harold Nelson said that uh, one of the important things with becoming systems oriented is to put attention from from the objects to, or the entities to the relations. So <laughs> they took it literally here. Um, this map is, has been very fascinating for me and it, uh, it uh, urged me to try to formalize what are the sense sharing um, um, features of gigamapping. So gigamaps, they need to be multi-scalar. They need to have horizontal stretch looking wide. Um, or having the big overview like the bird or like the telescope scanning the horizon of the system. They need to have vertical stretch um, looking across hierarchies uh, from micro, meso to macro, from overview to details and across hierarchies. All this, the point with the gigamap is to, to mix that and to relate it and not to split it up and fraction it. So uh, it's also obviously, or I would say obviously, a nice device to work with wicked problems. But what is a wicked problem is very much um, an issue of the eye that sees. Um, to the right, you have a gigamap uh, of a simple paper coffee cup, the most dull, stupid object I could find. And this is mapped out by the student, um, uh, mapping out all the processes, the uh, systems that are needed or, or that, that are feeding into that uh, cup of coffee. Um, and there's uh, enough of wickedness in that picture. So what is important with uh, with this is uh, this, this gigamap brings um, up visually what uh, the complexity of that object. Um, Another aspect is working interdisciplinary, working across disciplines, and uh, where giga mapping is a very nice uh, device to to try to understand each other, to breaching silos, and sharing perspectives and elicitating unknown unknowns. The famous Escher etching to the right, it's called relativity. Um, these people share the same space, but they are in total different perspectives. And more than that, they are blind. They don't realize that they have those different perspectives. And this is somehow often how these things are. And you need to uncover that unknown unknowns. Participatory design processes, sharing ownership, co-creating a picture of the complex system at hand are all part of the gigamapping process. Here, another um, process, an another gigamap. Um, showing how the gigamap seamlessly moves from describing things to generative mode. Um, in this case, represented with this small agricultural robot that is uh, designed for working with permaculture, where plants are, different crops are planted together, which makes it um, um, in very difficult to work with in, this, in industrial agriculture. So breaking those, bringing different things together that are seemingly unseparated is one of the issues here. So this means a creative process. Uh, to the right, there's this, it's a draft of our creative process framework. Uh, I won't go into that, but just to say that uh, gigamapping is central. It's a tool for a creative process because it makes you rethink the issues you are, have at hand, the problematics. Um, of course, uh, gigamapping can also be about data and information. 
which I, maybe I should have started with that one, but uh, which is the most obvious one. This is um, from a mountain community in Norway, Hemsedal, which is known for its um, tourist as a tourist destination for skiing. And this project is about uh, um, generating ideas and solutions for making tourism um, less harmful and more sustainable. Um, when working across disciplines, you cannot avoid to learn. You have to learn a lot or you're, you're forced to do it because the other disciplines you work with, they know things you don't know. Um, and um, working across these um, uh, limits, it, it really puts you in a learning state. We call this a very rapid learning process. And for that, we uh, use, this, use often rich design spaces, which you can see on the lower left. The whole space is, uh, contains many different maps. Also, many of them are giga maps. And these are working like memory devices. So we would probably know approximately where to refine the information you had. It's very, very efficient. Um, to the right, you see the same processes from a nursing home in Oslo, where we have the rich design space, the giga mapping with, with nurses and inhabitants. So it's brought to real setting. So I really like this last thing. I will show the diagram of uh, explaining the difference between traditional uh, information visualization on the top, where a complex situation is um, it's like funneled down to something that is very easy to understand, which is fine. But on the way, um, the, 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 the simplified result is not the same anymore as what was the, the starting point. So you lose a lot on the way. So giga mapping works more like the tunneling process on the bottom, where you take very complex uh, information and you sort of rebuild it or you digest it. Of course, it's also a simplifying but uh, at less, uh, it's, it's less simplifying. And you construct this picture of the complexity. If this was interesting for you, if you don't know it from before, or if you know it, you want to learn more, you could buy this book, which came out last year, Designing Complexity. Or you can go to the um, website, systemsorienteddesign.net, where there is a lot of information, the tools, the uh, a lot of projects and uh, material to look into, or you can just write me on, just email me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bir. This was a lot of information. <laughs> Maybe I can ask Bob to give a very short reflection on what Berger has said in, in relation to your own work, Bob. Yes, I would say, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that uh, the the process that uh, Berger outlines in the book and has uh, briefly told us about here uh, is is a, a, a an excellent one to get to uh, mapping various aspects of of uh, issues um, or and and processes. Um, uh, I, I think I have another way of trying to get my screen shared. Uh, so I'm going to open it up and see what happens. Good. Uh, I've switched it to some other, to another PowerPoint kind of program. Uh, it's supposedly opening up. Is it opening up? Yes, it is. Well, there it is. While you're doing that, um, Bob, can we ask Mary to reflect on Berger's work, sure. please? Yeah, now I unmute myself, but I think it's very outstanding and, and a very complex way, uh, like a comprehensive way how we can understand uh, different different kinds of problems. And uh, there's not like one way of making the gigamap, but there are several ways of making it and that it makes sense to the group that is working on. So I think it's a really great tool for creating uh, dialogue and conversations between the different people that are engaged and also in that sense, understand the uh, connections and, and causalities of the 
uh, uh, risk at hand. Yes, the difficulty is obviously trying to make something that is that extensive and multi-layered into something that is visual and understandable for more people than just the creators. That will be the big challenge. If there yeah. are any questions yeah. from yeah. the group, I'll mm -hmm. be happy to take one or two. The, the, the viewers, the participants, just raise your hand and I hope I'll see it on my screen. If not, then I'll continue with Marie has a, giving... Maria has... A, I was waiting for that, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is that okay? Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for floor, who is the boss? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I was wondering because I always say that the giga mapping process is for search for synergetic proposal. Would you agree on that or not? What did you can you repeat it? You have some a little bit bad sound. That the giga mapping process is uh, for search for synergetic proposals, would you agree on that or not? Uh, not, uh, uh, not exclusively. We, for example, we have uh, had a student, he was uh, mapping out uh, the Norwegian state with all its uh, institutions. And uh, as a result of the giga mapping approach, um, uh, as, I mean, I, I consciously um, denied to sharply define what a giga map is because i think it should be open but the only thing is or one of the few things that the, that i think are needed in a giga map is that they are very rich they have a lot of information because why would you make a giga map of something that has it's not information rich and why as a contrast to normal information visualization um you would not reduce try to and um, try to reduce that richness as much as possible. So it's yeah, also the so equity mode, really, but then not the energy mode. Yeah. Thanks so, so not much. Not necessarily yeah. meant to synergize, not necessarily meant to synergize, but more to explain the situation. It's both. Um, it um, it uh, it might start in a descriptive mode, but the wonderful thing is that that can seamlessly um, um, move into a generative mode where you start to to not only describe trying to understand and describe a system but you start to ask those what if questions what if the, if we did a little bit there or what if we did that and and that's totally integrated like this uh, um, example it's it's very refined it's not processed anymore and uh, with a little agricultural robot um thingy so it, it was like because uh, you know know very well that I have done quite a few descriptive giga maps myself, but I meant as I was not clear like giga mapping co-designing process is about search for synergetic proposal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it can be used. Apparently, Berger uh, accepts that it can be used as synergetic, but he has uh, refrained from defining the giga maps too accurately just to allow a lot of creativity and learning apparently. Thank uh, you, uh, Mary, for this question. Bob, I'd like to continue with your presentation if you're ready. I am not sure whether I'm ready or not. Uh, so I, I've got uh, my, uh, I've, when I hit share screen, I cannot get uh, something to share. And it says open, you know, open Zoom, and and when I open it, then it doesn't. I have the three into a, This tangle, this complete tangle, and I and and I was an, unable to, uh, you know, you some someone uh, also offered other things, but I, you know, there are too many different passwords and people, and and the the things are just not clear enough to be able to. To respond, I'm right. sorry. But Mary, I believe, is now sharing uh, a screen with okay. the Nyrix map on it. Maybe you'd like okay. to tell us what you did with that. I have the three maps via that we received via email before, so I was wondering if these could be useful to show. Yeah, Mary has three maps. The 
Nyrex map, the pathways map, and what was the third, um, uh, Mary? Alameda long-term care interfacing. Please pick one of those, uh, Bob, and describe what we're seeing. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll pick a different one. <laughs> no, the other one. <laughs> The Alameda one. Right. Um, when uh, I've gone at uh, mess mapping from the standpoint that people and organizations have different goals and different interests, and these come into conflict. Organizations get in each other's way, and they create not one problem but a system of problems, an integrated system of problems. And Ruckel Acoff, uh, an organizational specialist uh, from the previous generation, uh, suggested that we call this system of problems a mess. And I've adopted the, the mess and his notion uh, that it would be important to be able to represent the mess from the standpoint of the problems being experienced by the different organizations and the different individuals within the organizations. And so I've had the opportunity to work with uh, several organizations in the US and, and uh, overseas from here. And um, uh, what I've done is created a, a, a process by which the directors, in, we've invited the directors of the organizations who are experiencing this kind of stuck, usually it's a, 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 an experience of stuckness and the stuckness creates pain in the organization because the organization can't do what it's supposed to do. Um, and I suggested that we try to visualize this. And what you're seeing is on the screen right now, a completed such uh, mapping of, of this. Uh, each of those blobs, they're, they're, they're deliberately messy looking um, because uh, it's when you're talking about these kinds of organizational problems, uh, the organizations are not neat and the boundaries are not clear. And so the sharp uh, boxes that frequently are used by uh, other diagrammers uh, um, tend to constrain people. In fact, when I said, all you have to do is fill in these blobs, people are so relaxed and are able to begin getting to work right away. Um, each of the blobs, uh, br briefly, each of the blobs is an organization or, or a group of organizations in a sector like transportation or healthcare. Um, then the blobs inside the blobs are the specific organizations. And, the, uh, and we ask uh, in a group process that goes on sometimes several half days uh, for the directors to describe their pro the problems from their point of view. And we put those in these bright yellow boxes that you see in the blobs. Um, then the question is, what's keeping those, what's creating those, the, those problems? And very frequently, it's some kind of causality, some kind of rule, some kind of action, some kind of phenomena that is happening across the boundary of the organization that is creating the pain or the, which is creating, which is articulated as the problem from our organization's point of view. So we try to uh, identify those and, and, and see where the arrow leads, where it's coming from. Um, and you'll see whole bunches of arrows are, are, are going across the boundaries of organizations. 
So the, the directors are, are, are describing this and we have, a rec have recorders who are uh, uh, taking notes so that we can create a, 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 a master uh, mess map for them. Uh, so there's a there's a couple of interesting things happening here. One of the one of them is a redefinition of a partial redefinition of causality, which is what is uh, one of the arrows is arrow types is what is holding the problem in place, and where does that go? And the other one is this is directly causing pain to me. Uh, now, what's interesting is not only the mapping of this, which is important to create the artifact and keep it somewhat steady uh, for all the participants, but it's also um, important, I think, uh, uh, in, the, in the process that the group goes through, that they listen to each other. They're hearing each other's pain. They are learning that you're causing my problems, but I'm causing your problems. Oh dear, well, we have something in common here. <laughs> um, we, uh, so the, the, the main focus of the mess mapping prop process is to just describe the mess. After you've got, after you describe the mess, then you have the then the group has the the issue of what to do. In the particular case that that we're looking at here, there are some uh, thirty yellow bright yellow problem boxes. We got all of those boxes together, and we ask all, and we got the uh, the directors from each of these organizations together in the room and said, "We're going to spend two to five minutes on each problem. What's the best solution for it?" We we got a list of the solutions in two hours, most of which could be done by a decision of the, in this case, the county supervisors. And we went and recommended that they do them all at once, because if you try to change one thing in a in a system, the system readjusts, and you're still stuck in the mess. But if you can change uh, 20 or 30 of the problems at once, um, you can make a change in a system. I'll uh, ask you to switch to one of the other maps that you have. Uh, how, yeah, that one. <clears throat> so so the, what, what I've just been describing has been on the county level. Uh, a county in the United States, which had probably uh, uh, two to three thousand, two to three million people in the county. Um, there are also messes that I call mega messes, really, really large messes uh, that uh, humanity has to deal with. And I for had the good fortune to uh, uh, be able to act as a synthesizer and mapper of. Um, uh, some of those issues. This is one uh, which is uh, which the government of the United Kingdom faces. They have a bunch of uh, radioactive waste, uh, long-term radioactive waste that gets back to background level in a million years. So it's a million-year mess. How does an or how does a manager deal with that? Well, one of the ways is to take a perspective and try to to show the 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 whole thing. I it, this is a kind of mega. Uh, I'm I'm very happy with uh, Berger's uh, characterization of, of of this as as giga mapping. Uh, I it's probably I use the term information murals because part of what um, much of what I've been asked to do is then to create a, a, a display and teaching device, which I do as a as a large print out as a large mural. In this case, uh, it's about uh, four and a half or 
five feet high by 12 to 14 feet long and is as in the cafeteria of the organization in charge of nuclear waste in the UK. Um, on the left hand side is the history of the nuclear era. In the middle is the current decision making situation as it is seen by the managers of this organization. And to the right uh, is the 12,000 year plan of this organization for what to do for the next 12,000 years of the million year problem. Um, and if you wanna switch to the, the last one, I'll, I'll simply point out uh, that this was uh, the World Business Council for Sustainable Development in 2010 wanted to look, do a back casting from a set of goals, which are on the right, and um, figure out what was needed in order to achieve a sustainable 2050. And they got 29 of the, of the most uh, senior strategists from some of the biggest companies in the world, like Toyota and Volkswagen and Alcoa and places like that. They were the people who were create, who were thinking through these various issues and problems. And I was again, the synthesizer and used uh, information murals, or I would say giga mapping to help them with their solution. Uh, uh, we did a lot of the kind of informal um, uh, uh, mapping that Berger uh, described earlier uh, to uh, as as preface. It, we worked for a year and a quarter on this work until we presented uh, both this mural and uh, and a written report. Of course, I think I've probably used up my eight minutes. I'm able to use up eight minutes very fast anytime. When we talk about 12,000 year problems, Bob, maybe we should be a little more tolerant of the eight minutes. <laughs> well, thank you. What you're telling us is fascinating. I like in this one, uh, particularly, I like one of the um, issues is that you need Ukrainian uh, grain to make this work. And apparently um, there is a new situation in Ukraine. And I thought that was very interesting to see that change. May I ask Mary to Give a short reflection on Bob's work, please. You can turn yeah, no, off I was the presentation. Able to un unmute myself. So I think it's very also outstanding work. Um, and I've, I've been learning lots from um, Bob's work and trying to implement it for services that we design. And, uh, and, and I think it's just what Bob said that when people, they are obliged to listen to each other they will learn so much from each other. And they I learned also that when they come together, they heard from each other, but they didn't know each other yet. So it's kind of, uh, I, I felt like my role in there is to create spaces for people to meet and that way to bridge silos among themselves. Because other ways they, they kind of just continue because, and, and I realized that the coffee breaks, they've been really good because then the people, they change business cards and uh, start continuing the discussion over there that, hey, you talk about this and that, and, and they start continue the dialogue afterwards. So I, I think it's very great, great way. I think also like what the Harris conference has been about prototyping discussions and uh, so I think it's such an important thing that people engage in dialogue. So it's something I learned myself. Modern version of the old uh, fireplace where you exchange stories. Yeah. Given the complexity yeah. of the new world, apparently we need a digital fireplace, which is uh, 12 mm. feet wide and five mm. feet tall. Berger, may I ask you to reflect on some of uh, Bob's work, please? Mary, could you close the uh, image, please? The screen sharing. Um, yeah, I'm fantastic. Um, I was thinking about uh, if you know this map, it's called metabolic path pathways, metabolic pathways. 
Um, this professor sponsored by Roche, she spent 30 years with uh, drawing up the chemical formulas of, uh, of our, our bodily functions. And if, if somebody hasn't seen it yet there, please search and look at it. It's just a fantastic thing. And I think this effect of seeing, uh, seeing the complexity drawn and you don't understand the details. I'm not a chemist. I don't understand the formulas, but I understand it changed my, my conception of the, of biology in a way. I got a new understanding how complex it was, even if I understand it's a simplification. So you have some of the same, I think we have some shared intuitions that, that spur this, like uh, um, that you need this to, to understand masses or problematiques or, or problem networks. You need to, to have this, uh, reach this, richness you need to have all the information on the table or as much as possible on the table and uh, and um, this creates sort of a, not only a detailed it's not only about each detail of it but it's also a a, a whole whole understanding of of the problematic or the mess and what it takes to change it um i had a similar experience with we were working with the company and we were just drawing up the whole company its production um facilities its uh, its ecosystem of sale etc and this was a huge map i actually i can associate to the the, the size that we were talking about and they had this in the boardroom for many years and even if they knew they were part of the system they knew it very well but they sort of rediscovered that whole picture and rediscovered the uh, also parts which they didn't, didn't know. So yes, wonderful. Um, I was wondering about one yes. thing. I, I, just one question to Bob. Um, you said you, you change everything at once uh, with the first map, which was very interesting because I was thinking, hey, hold on, what about the unintended consequences of that changes? Like you, you, you know the saying that systems are counterintuitive. Well, uh, yes, uh, we didn't. We don't necessarily regard um, the changes that are made uh, to to uh, be perfect or last forever, oh. or uh, uh, have uh, unintended consequences. But the important thing, at least when I've been doing the mess mapping. On these on these county level and these organ interorganizational conflicts is that we have the directors in the room and the perspective. I was going to note that the perspective in the mess mapping that's um, maybe a subset of giga mapping. Um, I'm I'm happy to classify it in any other any old way, um, but if the perspective is that the directors know the structures and they know how they've been interrelating with other organizations. And uh, they know pretty well what the detail is. So we can exclude that from the map and focus on the mess. And they're mm -hmm. rather they're rather relieved to, to take that perspective and yeah. not to, to go into detail that they would have to with with a new employee or a client or or, so, or something like that they they understand each other they've been interacting with each other hmm. um so that, that that's just that's one perspective another perspective in you know in many of the your uh giga maps for for organization uh seems to be to uh be able to illustrate for a, a much wider group of people with much uh, a great de deal of difference between uh, their understandings mm -hmm. of the system. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the benefits of, of the, the, the gigamaps of yours that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bob. We, we, can, uh, we know we can talk for hours about this uh, topic. Uh, the the, the thing I like most about some of the maps that are made is uh, the one you mentioned was hanging in the cafeteria is that people could actually 
point at something and say, this is what we're talking about right now, instead of trying to describe the entire problem at the same time. Mm. I'd like to uh, move on uh, to Mary. Um, uh, so please, Mary, let's have your presentation. Okay, I suppose you're seeing my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. So I have background as an industrial designer uh, and also I have a doctor, doctoral degree in cultural place service design. And in my thesis, I began to investigate more how we could approach wicked problems when we design services. And this research I began by Truly to review, try to find tools that have been made to deal with wicked problems, and um, and I did it quite strictly that I wanted to find tools that were solely made for wicked problems, and four of them are here: uh, mess mapping, resolution mapping, dialogue mapping, and general 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 morphological analysis, and uh, I I also found a vigorous tool of giga mapping, and I already wrote paragraphs of it as well to my work and uh, then we had an email and I got to know that it's made for complex problems simple problems and all kinds of like problems and I was a bit upset because I would have wanted to also start using the tool in my uh, thesis to make experiments but I uh, also really found fascinating the mess mapping and uh, I started using it because it's a visual form so I thought that this is very good for designers because it's a visual way of communication rather than the morphological analysis that's very engineering based kind of uh, using computer to understand the problems. And um, so I, I took the mess map for this case study of cross-border mobility in the parents region. And I was able to convince six different um, consortiums that were currently working with the development of um, parents region uh, mobility and these are the areas of where they were situated in and parents region we can understand as the northern part of Europe that includes Russia, Finland, Sweden and Norway and um, and then uh, in total we had uh, 13 different encounters 11 online two in person in Rovaniemi it, it took around 19 hours of recordings and uh, we had 20 different people participating in the process. But because I was the solo uh, person to facilitate, facilitate the process, it took half a year to make the mapping. And this was the outcome. Maybe next time I will make better blobs rather than boxes. And uh, But I, we were in the facilitation, we tried to map on the different uh, areas. And we had this like a preliminary encounter to like discuss what are the areas that were uh, interesting for the people to engage in the di dialogue and and then I uh, there were issues as I said that we want to see some emergency planning then we had the policies legislation standards climate action commitment and collaboration etc and um, we can see here in the middle that in the last meeting we open up uh, with all the areas that we had discussed on and then we draw the interconnections of the problems in red and collaboration required in green and problem and challenges their connection roots and their causes were in, in black and and I use this kind of maybe service design thing that we put stickers in the end to the areas that people really want to work on so they identify problems in common and a lot of them were in the technology as well in the emergency planning but also to understanding the needs of local people that when they are uh, traveling across the borders. And it, this is a sequential tool to make through this focus group or encounters that uh, aims to exchange among the different uh, stakeholders or the participants to understand uh, the causalities and the problem uh, more holistically, uh, tool created by, by Horn. And here's a, a big closer shot on the technology and data sharing of the of the problems encountered. And then I was happy this spring I got an opportunity to learn a bit more Kika mapping, and we tried it out with the students at the Service Design Futures Two course. And here are the students that were were taking part, and I'm showing the map that they created in in two weeks. 
We work closely together with the Norwegian Labour and Welfare Administration, and they have this challenge of rapid changes, changes in working life. And the first stage we were asking that what are the macro, meso, micro levels of rapid changes in working life? Thinking about the context that we are living and ending, not ending, but still having the consequences of COVID-19, Ukrainian war, consequently the energy crisis in Europe. So these are some aspects that are creating like drastic changes in the working life and companies. And it may lead to massive layoffs, and but also there are companies that benefit from the situation and can employ people. But it's interesting for now to know what is their role and how they should collaborate with the enterprises, politicians and the society. And this way we use the triple diamond from DOCA, understanding the system first around, um, having a one pre at the first stage and a second pre after the diagnosis, understanding the system a bit more uh, truly. So these are some of the images that the students were drawing and, and making sense of like a desktop research. And some went even like understanding uh, the landscapes and regulations, the bigger picture. And this way we joined in the different maps that were made in hand to this more um, um, like a digital way that the groups would share the information between them and try to share a bit more connections. But then we also learned that this platform was not the best. Maybe my role next time will be better than Figma. And uh, so we have the uh, micro, meso, and macro, but also now understanding what kind of role it takes in these this different state, like uh, areas areas that there are. And after it, the students, they found through the SIP analysis also some places that are um, interesting to like zoom in, to in, make, make interventions and the potentials that they can work on. And they, they selected with now like some areas in common that they would uh, use interviews and workshops to start developing some possible solutions and services to tackle those situations. And here is my, my contact. So thank you for listening. But I think I've learned a lot with this, uh, both tools, and I think they, could complement very much each other. And, and as I think there are shapes that Gigamaps maybe take form of mesmap or mesmap take a shape of Gigamap. I think they are very, sometimes come very close, um, although they have some different principles as well. Thank you very much, Mary. It's so nice to see you, uh, what you're doing in action. And of course, uh, labor um, uh, problem is something that is very interesting and um touches a lot of people um because um mary was so good to actually finish within the eight minutes we have a bit more time uh, for the people um, uh, viewing to get some questions so who can i give the floor to let's see now if there is no one immediately ready i don't see any hands then i'd like uh, bigger to comment uh, a bit on mary's work open your microphone there yes um yes very nice work i think it's um, the case is kind of uh, really really interesting of course it would be very difficult to do this today with the include the whole Barnes re region it has changed so much the borders are closing down unfortunately <clears throat> um what I I was I think that's um what I was wondering a bit is um it's it's very um some of these mess maps have a lot of words words a lot of text and um the uh, uh, the nuclear waste map was more visual or more had was less text heavy in a way. Um, could you say something about that? Um, um, as a designer, um, you became very textual in this, but that, is that the result of the process or is that um, another reason why it's um, 
it's so text heavy. Mary. Well, I think my, my maps are maybe even more text heavy than Bob's are. Yeah, I know this stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think next time I should learn to be maybe more visual and use the designer skills there as well. And uh, also learn now that Bob was sharing about the colors a bit more like the yellow for the problems or, you know, you could use a bit more okay. visuality. On the I don't think it's wrong in any way. It's just yeah. different. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm just wondering what kind of considerations you had about it, uh, um, choosing that format. I think it has, of course, advantages. And it's like uh, I, we had this very funny discussions. Um, um, uh, some people complained to Andreas, our, a colleague of us, that uh, those giga maps are so complex and it takes, it's not possible to understand and and so on. And then he said, would you prefer a hundred page um, report instead? Yeah, um, I think I, am. <laughs> I think similar with the maps maps that actually like what I read on Bob's work that often people they prefer the map as the report. Yeah, that, and, and and uh, yeah, and, but, and yeah. yeah. The other other thing is that um, people asked him and, and Andreas again, can you explain? Uh, very quickly, like an elevator pitch, what you are doing, and uh, and he says that if, if you don't have half an hour, um, forget it, because if you want, if you work with complex issues, you cannot dumb it down to uh, something that would fit in an elevator pitch. So, mm -hmm. yeah, part, uh, of, <clears throat> part of what um, so I always part of what I always think about <clears throat> is. Who is expected to be viewing yeah. uh, th this, um, and how you know, and and one has to make choices then, uh, and uh, and 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 has to eliminate you know the ability to educate uh, someone who knows nothing about nuclear waste, yeah. but then someone who knows nothing about nuclear waste is unlikely to be in the cafeteria of the UK agency in charge of nuclear waste. Uh, uh, e even the Blue Ribbon Committee that they were expecting from the parliament was, was probably trying to get, get, a little bit, get a little bit up to date before arriving uh, uh, to, to make judgments. Uh, and in the same way, uh, those are the kinds of things. And, and I, I think also the... Um, uh, the, the, the actual physical context in which uh, I expected the mess maps to be made. Most of mine are, are made with the view that we've got a round table and probably five or no more than six people sitting around the table, around the round table. So uh, that's, uh, that's the size of the map. And mm -hmm. that constrains also as you as designers, you know, typeface and, and other kinds of uh, presentations for <laughs> for that level. Unless I were do, to do as 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 Mary uh, really uh, pointed out in her example, you you have different contexts, different levels of context, and when you have different levels of context, you may need multiple uh, multiple um, presentations around a table like that. Or maybe even multiple murals. I've got yeah. some uh, murals that I think probably need different different perspective, different ways of reorganizing all or most of the information to look at it in a different way. The, the beauty of, of having Here, those... Sorry. Oh, yeah, um, there's... there's a question. I see that, um, Irina Wang is uh, waiting to ask her question. Please, Irina, go ahead. Hi, um, it's not really an um, addi additional question, but I'd just like to comment and add on to the conversation about um, text, um, being text heavy with these maps. I think actually that um, something about the design perspective of these complex issues is not so much whether we add images or visuals, but rather how we um, organize information in a way, right? Because my background is a um, long time ago, I was uh, in typography, and so it was very 
um, text, literally designing the typeface level. Um, but now in the systems design world, I find myself returning to um, even the spatial organization of that text makes such a big difference um, for the way that it's communicated. So in some way, I like I like that something can be text heavy and still considered heavily designed um, in a way that would be better than, you know, like a 100 page Google Doc. <laughs> um, and thank you for all the presentations. Um, it was really nice to see um, the different contrasts in these uh, maps. May, may I comment that? Uh, thank you, uh, Rina. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. You, uh, I, you saw that both Berger and Bob were nodding at your comments, and apparently Berger still likes to talk about that. Go ahead, Berger. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about this huge mural uh, uh, Bob presented, and the nice thing with this is that you can actually zoom in and out by just walking closer, and you can have very small font for some things, and then you can step back and get bigger fonts or if it's still text-based, so you can play along with these these elements, which makes it uh, easy to grasp the the a course level or like the, the 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 rough structure, and then you can go in and and read stuff. That's very yeah. nice. That's right. I was just thinking about that. Even when I when I find most... I agree, uh, Berger. I agree. What I found a lot uh, very interesting um, from all the presentations is the need for actually human contact. Yeah. And in Bob's case, the need for um, uh, the actual physical information mural um, uh, just to make it more tangible and do exactly what you've mentioned. I see that Gopal has um, a comment. Go ahead, Gopal. Is, is, is thumbnailing still possible? We have a thumbnail, and once we hit the thumbnail, the entire information flow will happen. The large map, it will happen. Is it still possible to reduce a large information map to a thumbnail? I, understand. I, see, I think that is a question, question to, to me. Oh. Yes. No. Yeah. Either gigabyte was, or mismatch. There's, there's large Either. With all the I, I, I thought me, what I heard was. Rephrase your question. Uh, I thought what I heard was his asking if it, it would would he be able to uh, to see that? And yet the answer is uh, yes. You can download any of my uh, maps, mess maps, or uh, information murals. And uh, since I didn't have my screen, uh, here's the, here's my website, bobhorn.us. Yes. I, I visited well, the, it. Thank you. Excuse me, Gopal. Excuse me, Bob. The question was: oh. Gopal works for a large company with a lot of information, um, and he was wondering if it was possible to get all this information streams into a visualization like an information mural. One has to take a perspective on, on each uh, large communication like this. So maybe, maybe not one, but maybe several. It depends on how much information, which there is trillions of bits of, in, of information, and which individuals and what perspective and what purpose. So each one of those has to do with how big and what you put on something, what kind of uh, a goal that you have. But yes, you yeah, can do you. that. The answer is yes, but it depends. Uh, yes, and, and, it's, and uh, I had certainly a similar experience that Berger had, uh, one of the, uh, murals that you saw, the, the, the Sustainable 2050, was in the boardroom of a company here in uh, the US, a forestry company. And they, they printed out the mural. It was uh, you know 10 or 12 feet long and it's hung in the boardroom. And I said, well, what do they do with it? And they said, well, now remember, this is gonna be happening 
in the 2030s, probably, something like that. So let's go review that. Um, and I said, well, why did they have it in the boardroom? And they said, our product takes 40 years to be made. We're a forestry company. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, so having that picture always with them, but only from the pers you know the high level perspective, it didn't have anything to do with planting particular seeds, or or or, it, or the perspective of there's a there's a whole mountainside that has just burned in California. Uh, how are we going to replant it? That was not in it either. It was the larger picture of the of of the the energy manufacturing. Uh, economy, uh, all of the different aspects of the future were there in, 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 in displayed to some degree at a high level, but also a level in terms of what was required. That is what must yeah. must happen in order for us to have a, a sustainable 2050. That was the perspective. Thank you. We're running out out of time, uh, I'll just take Mary's last question, Marie Davidova. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for the great presentations. It was very exciting. I will, I'm wondering, um, like, because all the examples selected, select the, all the examples of the map selected seems, seems to me non-circular. So right. my question is, how do you reach circularity with these maps or yeah i didn't understand can you could you stand a little closer to your microphone me yes, yes. now you, you is it better yes so i wanted to thank you for the great presentation that it was very exciting and i wanted to uh ask like um, i'm curious about like uh, all of those examples that were selected didn't seem to me much circular and i was uh, wondering how do you reach circularity in uh, these kinds of maps was it uh, audible when you when you say circularity, Mary, do you mean circularity in in terms of sustainability or in terms of how the process works? Okay, yeah, um, yeah. I can answer that because I'm I'm not a cybernetist, so I'm not um, very fascinated by that model or that idea of circularity. But. Uh, I have done some uh, modeling uh, inspired by system dynamics where we have these feedback loops and uh, and um, like the unbalanced and balanced feedback loops. So it depends a little bit on the on the um, context. Um, but in general, um, we have feedback loops in there, but uh, it's not like the main principle of. Uh, we are more um, um, inspired by subsystems methodology and critical systems thinking, where um, circularity is a part of the palette or the whole the 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 the, 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 the tool chest in a way. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I um, would like to thank the speakers, of course. Berger, Mary, Bob, for sharing with us um, their vast uh, amount of knowledge. And I'd like to thank everyone who stayed uh, and viewed this and asked questions for the participation. Hope you enjoy this meeting and this panel discussion. And um, well, I hope you have a, fair, a very nice conference. Thank you again. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Floor, for a very nice um, mm -hmm. facilitation. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See you. And thanks for getting those those three murals up for me. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs>